वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स टू दिस पीरियड ऑफ सायंस माय सेल्फ मयूर साबळे श्री सरस्वती भवन हायस्कूल औरंगाबाद अँड वी आर गोईंग टू टीच और लर्न अ सायन्स टुगेदर सो हिअर आय एम गोईंग टू स्टार्ट विथ द सायन्स अँड टेक्नॉलॉजी पार्ट फर्स्ट दॅट इज द चॅप्टर नंबर सेकंड नथिंग बट द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ इलिमेंट्स अँड इन द प्रेझेंट चॅप्टर वी विल डील विथ सो मेनी इंटरेस्टिंग फॅक्ट्स so students are you ready to learn with me thank you so my dear students we are going to learn the various aspects related to the periodic classification of elements in the present chapter so in this chapter we are going to deal with the elements and their classification then the dobereiner strats then the newland's law of octets then the mendeleev's law periodic table and the modern periodic table uh, in the modern periodic table we are going to learn about so many interesting facts that are related with the various elements and along with that we will study the um, the various periodic trends which are seen in the elements so students uh, we will start with the classification of elements uh, as you know that uh, in the previous standard you learned about the elements and you are very um, well known about the uh, the structure of atom and you also know that although the elements are different but their atoms are of the similar properties so today although the 118 elements are known to the scientific world but around the year 1800 only about the 30 elements were known so you must be um, uh, predicting that how much vast research about the element it got in uh, last 220 years so students in the initial classification of elements all the elements they were classified into the groups of metals and the non metals uh, more and more information about the properties of elements it was gathered during this period but remember uh, later on the group of element which uh, was showing the similarity between the metals and non metals called as metalloids it got established but remember when we see the elements and their classification a question arises in our mind that what is the reason behind the classification of elements what is the need of classification of elements so Uh, so many elements and their properties and their uses and such elements they uh, shows the formation of various compounds with uh, by the chemical reaction with each other therefore it was necessary to categorize all the elements into a definite manner and for that purpose the scientists they tried to classify them into or the group them into the groups according to some specialized characteristics in them and according to that the elements they were classified and so many scientists they tried to classify the elements into the various groups or according to the trends or the properties among them we will see the uh, the first scientist who successfully tried to classify the elements into the uh, the groups his name was the dobereiner this is called as a dobereiner strats so students Dobereiner he was a german scientist and in the year 1817 he suggested that the properties of elements are related to their atomic masses what did he told the atomic masses are fundamental properties of any elements and according to those uh, um, atomic masses he tried to categorize the element into the different types so the dobereiner he made the groups of three elements and each is having the similar chemical properties and called them as triads what it mean the elements which shows the similar chemical properties they were grouped together in the group of three and he arranged those elements according to the increasing order of their atomic masses and what it means the group of three elements which is having semi similar chemical properties um, in which the first element will be having the least atomic mass 
then higher than that and again higher than that and he showed that the atomic mass of the middle element it was approximately equal to the mean of the atomic masses of other two elements what it mean when we study the um, atom, uh, increasing order of atomic masses of the element what happens the the first will be the having least atomic mass second will be having the um, more than that and third will be having more than that so the atomic mass of the first element plus atomic mass of the third element divided by 2 that will be the mean of those atomic masses and that will be equal to the that will be approximately equal to the atomic mass of the middle element so dover dover give some uh, um, group of elements um, or the triads let us see some examples the first triad is the lithium sodium and potassium now we know that the atomic actual atomic mass of the lithium is 6.9 so uh, lithium 6.9 then the sodium uh, which is having atomic mass 23 and the potassium it is having atomic mass 39.1 so according to the dober triad if this was the triad as we know that the lithium sodium and potassium they are highly reactive and they are having the similar chemical properties that they are group in the or we will see it later on but they are having the similar chemical properties so here the um, if we uh, calculate the atomic mass of the or the mean of the atomic masses of the first and third element so we will arrange them likewise the um, lithium it is having the 6.9 then the potassium is having the atomic mass 39.1 divided by 2 is equal to 23.0 that it means the atomic mass of the sodium 23 we got by the mean of the atomic mass of the first and third likewise he gave some uh, another uh, group of three elements called as triads like the calcium strontium and the barium then the uh, chlorine bromine iodine again those are the halogens they show the similar properties and like the calcium strontium and barium in which again this is the triad uh, we arrange if we arrange them according to the increasing order of their atomic masses the calcium will be first then the strontium will be second and barium will be the third so if the mean of the atomic masses of calcium and barium if we calculate them we get 88.7 and the actual atomic mass of the uh, strontium is 87.6 that it means this uh, number is approximate equal to the atomic mass so of the first and third element then the third triad was given chlorine bromine iodine again as we know that the actual atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5 and um, that of uh, bromine uh, if we calculate uh, by the mean of the chlorine and iodine atomic masses it will be 35.5 plus 126.9 divided by 2 and we get 81.2 that is uh, approximately equal to the actual atomic mass of uh, bromine that is equal to 79.9 that it means students Doberaner successfully tried to classify the elements into the group of three but as I told you earlier that by the, uh, the time um, uh, at which the Doberaner tried to classify the elements into triads all the elements were not known to the world therefore all the elements they didn't follow the uh, the law of triads or he was unable to give um, all the triads of all the elements present by that time therefore this theory or the um, the type of classification given by the Doberaner uh, it was got lag behind so after Doberaner's triads a new land was a new scientist now we are going to study newland's law of octaves so in the year 1866 uh, john newland he was a british scientist or english scientist and he correlated the atomic masses of the elements uh, with their uh, their properties and uh, he arranged the 56 elements known uh, at that time in the increasing order of their atomic masses 
how many elements were known by the year 1866 only 56 elements now a day we know 118 elements so he uh, tried to classify the known 56 element uh, in such a manner that he started with the lightest element hydrogen and ended it uh, with the thorium and he arranged those elements according to the increasing order of their atomic masses so he showed that or he found that the properties of elements they are recurring or they are going to repeat after a regular interval of time as uh you know the music note that is the um, in the british it is called as the do re mi fa sol la ti and um, in indian music it is called as the sa re ga ma pa dha ni so likewise he correlated the properties of elements with the uh, the the notes of the music and he uh, showed that the lithium and the sodium uh, which is having the similar property and he kept them in a uh, or he kept them together as we calculate the um, uh, the number that the lithium then uh, the second is beryllium third is boron fourth is carbon fifth is nitrogen sixth is oxygen seventh is fluorine and eighth is the sodium so the properties of lithium and sodium they are similar together so um, likewise the sa re ga ma pa dha ni and again sa is repeated likewise the fluorine and chlorine they also showed the similar properties so you can observe that the musical notes as they get repeated again and again likewise the properties of elements in this order they get repeated again and again and there was resemblance in the properties of every first and eighth elements therefore he called them as the octaves so the new land he called the similarity observed in the eighth and the first element as the law of octaves so students we studied the new land's law of octave but a question may arouse arise in your mind that uh if newland was able to classify the elements uh in the um, in the definite manner according to the musical notes then why this newland's octaves they lag behind so there are some limitations of the newland's octaves we will see it one by one uh this uh, law of octave it was applicable only up to the calcium that means all the elements they didn't follow the law of Uh, um, octaves. Then Newland he fitted all the known elements in the table of seven by eight. That it means fifty six known elements were um, uh, got fitted into it. But Newland placed two elements in uh, some boxes to accommodate all the known elements in the table. So you can see here that the cobalt and nickel, then the um, uh, uh, cerium and the lanthanum. they are kept together in this periodic table along with that uh, uh, some elements which are having the different properties they were also kept uh, under the same note in the octave for example the new land new land he placed the metals cobalt and nickel under the note do you can see here in the indian sa so uh, they are kept with the halogens if you see there are the fluorine and chlorine and the cobalt and nickel they are kept with them so um, it is um, not possible to keep the cobalt and nickel uh, with the halogens then uh, oxygen and sulfur if we observe that the oxygen and sulfur along with them the iron is kept there so um, it is not possible to keep the iron with the uh, oxygen and sulfur which are the non metals so new land octave they did not have provision to accommodate the newly discovered element after that so many elements got discovered but we are unable to place them in the that new land octave and the properties of the new element discovered later on it did not fit in the new land's law of octaves therefore this new land's law of octave it got lag behind thank you in the next period we will study with the or uh, study the mendelius periodic table thank you